at least give you a different perspective of, of looking at where your child's at. A lot of people think that it's based off of the brain, the brain's ability to, to contract the hand, let's say, or the brain's ability or inability um, to respond to certain movements. A baby isn't born with cognitive prowess. It just isn't. It just does not how it happens. A baby is born in a very neutral environment, ready to get exposed to gravity because it's never experienced it before. And I'm talking about just coming out of the womb, you know, to breathe against gravity. That's a big movement for the head to move against gravity, right? Gravity is what makes all of the movements start to happen, right? Because we oppose gravity. So when the head comes out of the womb and all of those wonderful things happen, and then you get what you think is spinal extension, right? That's just like a cold balloon coming out into a hot environment, that whoosh, right? And that's what brings a baby out. Now, again, I can't say, oh, too bad you had a C-section, you had one C-section, and now all the rest of the children are C-section. What I can say is, and this is why we're doing the class this week, right, is that there's ways that your baby should be moving, and there's ways that your babies cannot move, doesn't know to move. It's not that they don't want to do it. If I hear one more time, my baby hates tummy time or doesn't want to do it, they're a month old. No, they're, they're physically unable. If a child's put in a position where they can't breathe or have a breath swallow ratio, they're not doing it, right? They can't, <clears throat> give me a second. Or like if I say like, oh, I need a drink or <clears throat> these are self-soothing techniques and self-soothing techniques don't even start to appear in children until the age of two right? You and I can do something like this and get a hair out. You know, we have these fine motor skills, you know, maybe a two-year-old is like going like this, you know, and, or, or they're, they're like this and they're still doing it. And you're like, get the hair out of your face. They don't even, they don't even know it's, it's a thing, much less blowing your nose or potty techniques, right? These kind of things come, but the, what the brain needs to be able to do is to receive movement. Right, we really have to start looking at this in reverse. I get it that a lot of you are already feel that you're behind the eight ball, let's say, or, or missing a milestone, or they don't have the milestone momentum. But what I'm trying to say is, where is your baby's foundation or your child, right? My 20 year old is still my baby. So that's what the class is about. Please don't look at the newborn movement assessment like, oh, I have a 15 year old. No, the newborn movement assessment is about, is, is a child ready to move? But I'll be working, it's my training courses. I work on adults in the class. I work on children. I, I do demos on skeletons, on my dolls to show you various techniques of what can be done to influence your child's optimal movement. Now, that's where I was at with my son. When they said he would never walk or talk again, I'm like, okay, guys, I'm, I'm good with that. You know, what can he do today he couldn't do yesterday? And I realized those are such the foundation of optimal movement. When you're looking at a child, and especially when they have genetics, that's when people, I wouldn't say have the give up, but I can't go further because I have a genetic condition. You'll see in genetics just as much as you'll see with CP and autism. I don't know why autism gets the spectrum disorder when all children have a spectrum dis disorder, right? That that's what goes on, you know, but, but again, and I mean all children with, with a diagnosis, you know, and that's what we're here to say because a child with, with issues with CP that has issues with structural vision is different with a child that has CP that has issues with functional vision, right? They're two different concepts of how the brain works. So please guys, this is my certification class and it's a huge course because it consists of all my trainings from around the world. Um, and please join me to help your child and to learn movement and you'll be in a private Facebook group. And we're here to teach you, first of all, what kind of movements is your child able to do? And then what child, what kind of movement is your, is your child able to perceive or receive, right? That's how we start changing cognitive development, whether it's on myself or on you or on, on your child. But meanwhile, I'll see you here in the group um, and please ask your questions, they've been great and I'll see you in a little bit, thanks. Private messages all the time. I prefer that I don't, they go through the group. I can set up an appointment with you, 
but people send information, videos, and all that. I don't do reviews on my private messengers. First of all, if I'm going to give free advice, I feel everybody should learn from it. And so that's why I have the setting. Um, and second of all, too, I understand that there's privacy issues and so forth. Facebook has this great feature now that you can actually post into the group anonymous, anonymously. <laughs> and... Um, and when I ping you and so forth, it will, you will get the message, but nobody will see who it is.